guys, it happened. It did indeed finally happen. The Liberal Party of Canada, Justin Trudeau's Liberals, have fallen below the federal NDP in the polling. They are literally doing worse than Jagmeet Singh's NDP, which I never thought was ever possible. And the terrible thing about this is the Liberals have very diffuse support. The NDP is very concentrated. And the NDP is currently pulling at 20%, with the Liberals only at 19%. And you also see the Conservatives way ahead at 44%, absolutely dominating. So that 19% is going to win the Liberals way less seats than the NDP, because the NDP are really big in Winnipeg, college towns, places with a lot of union jobs, and the Liberals are just kind of the party for people who vote for the Liberal Party. I've seen someone do a study before where different parties have specific demographic groups or people who work in specific fields who vote for them, except the Liberal Party. The Liberal Party is like the party for downtown Toronto and Montreal Metropolitans. And other people will vote for them if it seems like maybe the better option in an election compared to the Conservatives or the NDP. Really, it's only ever the Conservatives that they're being compared against. And so right now, as they collapse, there's no real, real group for them to kind of lean back on and make that their sort of steady base. Their steady base is Montreal. And even that is breaking apart because they were only ever at around 45% in most ridings in Montreal. Like, yes, they were 20 points ahead of the Bloc Québécois or the NDP or the Conservatives, depending on the riding. But if enough people start walking away from you, you start to have like ridings where the Liberals are only at 34% and the next closest party is maybe only 3% away. And depending on how voters turn out, things could get real bad real fast. In fact, David Coletto from Abacus Data, who I think they do a really good job with the approval ratings especially, he even showed that with voters certain to vote, this is another poll, uh, this one I just showed you is from Main Street, but this poll from Abacus Data of voters who are certain to vote shows that the Conservatives are winning with 46% to 20% for the Liberals and 20 for the NDP. A 26% lead for the Conservative Party of Canada. I go follow David Coletto on Twitter if you can. I think it's he puts out really interesting stats from Abacus Data. If you don't want to read their full reports, he tends to put out a few interesting little tidbits that you might want to look at. But now I just want to go in and sort of dig into some of the Main Street numbers that we just saw, the one that shows that the Liberals are pulling below the NDP. And although some might say, well, these polls have a margin of error of 2 to 4%. Okay, I hear that. At the same time, the Liberals have no business even being in spitting distance of the NDP. It's supposed to be the default governing party of Canada, the natural governing party of Canada. And it's not anymore because they forgot who they were serving. And I was having a great conversation with a man today about this very same subject. He was talking about in private uh, corporations, eventually people lose touch with the sales floor. And we're talking about retail stores. People lose touch with the sales floor and they just start trying to monetize every little thing in the store. 25 cents for a bag. Oh, you want to be on this rewards program that costs this much? And they forget about what matters. The Liberal Party have forgotten about the middle class voter, the person who actually cares about their how much taxes they're paying and what benefits they're getting from government and how long the lines are for health care services. Same thing in British Columbia. David Eby has completely forgotten. Do you know who's actually doing an amazing job in Canada right now as a premier? It's not the premiers that you are thinking of. Premier Blaine Higgs, in my opinion, is one of the best premiers in the country over the past few decades. Not just in the country right now. In the country, bar none, he's the best premier. But in terms of the last two or three decades, he would rank up there, in my opinion, with Ralph Klein. He's running three, a, a three-year surplus in the Maritimes, a part of the pro, a country that is known for debt and deficits and needing to be bailed out by the federal government and by other provinces through equalization. He's actually got them spending money correctly. He's in a position where he can lower taxes in the Maritimes. He's actually growing a maritime economy. He's doing a great job because he focused on the things that matter. And yes, you can look at the approval ratings and say, well, Blaine Higgs is like the least popular premier in the country. Yes, because a lot of the things he's doing might be temporary painful. But the 32% of people who still like him really like him because they know what he's doing. They know 
the types of things he's doing is going to improve life substantially that his parental rights moves are going to make life way better for new brunswick families it's going to improve the the uh the social stability of the province not having woke people going around basically having witch hunts against parents because they don't believe in gender ideology making sure we have better academic outcomes he's doing a fantastic job and right now, this is the deeper numbers from the Main Street poll for Justin Trudeau and the Liberals, that they're not even actually at 19%. They're actually technically at 17 because 12% of people are undecided. Technically, the NDP is only at 17 as well. Conservatives at 40. And then you have the Bloc Québécois at 7, Greens at 3, PPC at 2, and then people saying other is 2. Undecides are 12. Really, I always kind of mash the other and undecides together because a lot of people saying other usually just don't forget about the undecided option just click the button too early on the poll because usually they have undecided always listed as the very last option the, the liberals have not actually done anything to win over voters in a very long time in this current election cycle that we're in in terms of between 2021 and going towards 2025 it's only been attacking and whining at the conservatives you can attack your opponents attack ads and negative campaigning works but it only works if people think that you are an incredible person to make that attack right now in british columbia david eby and the bc ndp are just swinging wildly at the conservatives it doesn't matter if they find a bad tweet from a candidate from three years ago that everyone would agree oh, yeah i wouldn't have tweeted that they're not doing the fundamentals right the bc uh ndp they do not have the credibility to attack anybody because they are giving crack pipes to 13 year olds they are giving snorting kits to 13-year-olds. And the same thing with Justin Trudeau. The, the, like the, the economy is terrible. In mass immigration is awful. His anti-free speech laws are not popular with anybody. He is just doing a bad job. Our foreign policy is a complete clown show. Basically, our foreign policy is shaking hands with dictators and terrorists and then attacking all of our allies or pretending to be too nonchalant and signing stupid UN deals. That's our foreign policy right now. Nobody likes Trudeau. That is the bare bones basics of what's going on right now. And I just want to bring up this from the Liberal Party that demonstrates my point here. This is a tweet from the Liberals just an hour ago. This polling was out while this tweet was, this, this polling was active while they put out this tweet. So they should have known better how, how pathetic this looks. This is breaking. For the second time in six days, Pure Polya failed to win a non-confidence vote. He's using his time in Parliament to push for deep cuts to the services that families rely on. But we're focused on delivering real solutions for Canadians. Now, I love, and also it has this pathetic thing under here about talking about how we have a record-breaking September digital fundraising going on right now. No one cares. Nobody cares. Wow, guys, we're doing well in the fundraising. Cool? I don't... Whatever. Attacking Polyev because he's going to cut service spending. One, nobody actually believes Polyev's going to cut critical service spending. Like he's not going to start cutting healthcare. He's not going to start cutting like certain social security benefits that have been around for decades. He's obviously not going to do that. But for most Canadians these days, and I've seen the polling on it, and it lines up exactly with people I've talked to, and I talk to thousands and thousands of people. The current polling on cuts showed people like poll, uh, like cuts because they don't believe any of the increase in government spending over the past nine years of Justin Trudeau's government has been particularly vital. Yes, every department might need a spending increase every year just to deal with inflation and the increase in population. You have more people to service. But with a lot of new programs, nobody's life has gotten better with any of these new programs. So you're just threatening Canadians with a good time every single time you say, if you vote conservative, they could cut spending. Okay, Great. I love to see cut spending go down. People act, the, the government's never going to be able to make the vast majority of its citizens for good reason to identify that the government's wallet is the same as their own wallet. No Canadian actually thinks that a service spending cut from some bloated bureaucratic department that's not doing anything for anybody is an attack on me. Most people like to spend their own money. And if any premier wants to stay in office, they need to give people their own money back. There's, It's not austerity like you're going to get some lefty saying. It's giving people back their own flipping money. It's just giving people back their money. We are at one of the most highest rates, like in Canadian history, we are at one of the highest rates of government spending. Our GDP is 44, probably more higher than that since they lasted the stat 
all public spending. It's even higher when you take into account that they count government contracts, like the, the government contracting workout is private spending, even though it's still government spending. It's just a country of government spending. If we cut stuff, nobody's life will get worse. In fact, it will get marketably better. But now I just want to look into some of the deeper stats here because this is where this isn't even really a big it doesn't this isn't really fundamental to why the liberals are doing badly it's just kind of an interesting thing to look into and i think it's dangerous for the country moving forward just how bad the gender gap is between the parties right now so right here we see these are all the parties this is what the undecideds included uh so like you, you see the undecided down here so these numbers up top are not going to add up to 100 so Trudeau is that is most of his support right now is 22.7% female, conservative only 28.9% female, and uh Sings NDP 18.7 female. Look at that. Conservatives are winning 50.8% of men. With with undecideds included, they're already winning more than half of men. There is a big problem in this country of a big gender gap between men and women. And part of it is just a lot of like anti-conservative propaganda, making women feel terrified that conservatives are coming after them. How? Because certain conservative MPs don't like ninth month abortions. Okay, nobody likes that stuff, but that demonstrates media propaganda, social media propaganda. So I don't think that the conservatives need to budge an inch on their platform. If anything, I think they could actually afford to be a bit more socially conservative. But the conservatives going forward really need to target more advertising towards specifically younger women because that's who's mostly voting liberal and NDP these days, single women who are under the age of 40. It's a demographic group that is targeted relentlessly with propaganda. And so the conservatives don't need to spread propaganda themselves, just mindless messaging, but just needs to push some ideas that they've been putting forward to men better towards women. Same policies, but just learn to rephrase it. That's what I'm actually decent at when I do campaigning. I can talk to anybody in language they understand, not because I'm a marvel. You just have to have type, take a step back and kind of realize the sorts of words that people use when talking about the same subjects, because we can agree on something. But because I use different verbiage, you think I'm like proposing something radical when we literally are talking about the same thing that we agree on. But you use softer language than I do. So I think that the big battle that the conservatives need to wage right now going towards the 2025 election is that we should be trying to win more women. We should be trying to win more women so we can fight this gender divide because this is the divide and conquer politics that the liberals have been using for the past nine years. It's not going to win the next election, but it can cause a lot of social chaos if they make it that the conservatives become the nasty men party and the liberals are the party and the NDP are the parties that stand up for women. It's not true. They actually basically disempower women and pretend that women can't do anything without the government, which is a loser hopeless, disgusting narrative that radical feminists have pushed for like the last 10 years because a lot of radical feminists just happen to be socialists. So they tend to push a lot of socialism on younger people and mostly women because, you know, feminists. Regardless, though, that's what I think we need to do mo moving forward. Like, share and subscribe to this channel. If you want to support me, you can always donate to the legal fund I have linked in the description below or pinned at the top of the comments. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, Recommend the channel to a friend. I usually don't do any of this stuff in videos. So I'm trying to do this more. I don't even usually say my name in videos. My name's Wyatt Claypool, by the way. Uh, I just do this so quick and dirty that I end up forgetting all these fundamental things I should probably do when producing stuff. But if you have any suggestions for more topics, you can always DM me on X on Facebook. You can uh, just put stuff in the comments below. I always scroll through them. Obviously, I can't reply to everybody because if it's like 300 comments and a lot of people obviously just end up saying the same thing because it's the same, like one specific topic and a lot of people share the same ideas on those things. So I don't always get back to people, but I do scroll through and take and look at suggestions, way to improve the show, what I should do. One improvement I need to do is get a better haircut because it's turning into like a weird 70s, like hair metal type thing going on here. Uh, <laughs> but overall, I'm going to try and get a better set. But since I've been in Abbotsford, I can't have like, you know, the normal set with the nice pictures behind me and white walls that make the lighting look nice. But uh, thanks for watching the show, guys, and I'll see you guys next time.